So I'm gonna be making some braised lamb shank and I already started seasoning, so I thought I'd have to stop. So, so far what's on there is just a little of this. It's called seasoned pepper from a brand called Tastefully Simple. And it has um, black pepper, red bell pepper, sugar, oregano, and extract of paprika. Paprika, paprika, paprika. Anyway, so I've got that on there. I don't have any salt, anything else. The next thing I'm gonna go in with is my Mountain Rose Herbs um, Red Alia. Red Alia. Salt is so beautiful, hold on. I love this brand. Okay, let's see if I can give it better. It's all red, it's like clay. Clay, clay color. Put some of you, get on in there. I want the world's biggest salt celery, celery, cellar, the world's biggest salt cellar. Okay, next is uh, just some paprika, paprika. Plenty. And then um, I'm gonna put some of this onion onion, which is just a variety of different kinds of onion, garlic, sea salt, shallots, red bell pepper, parsley, chives, leeks, citric acid, and a little of this product called garlic garlic. And that has minced garlic, uh, minced onion, salt, garlic powder, chive, spices, citric acid. So I'm going to season them both sides that way. I have to unscrew the top of this um, to get some out. And this is just my marinade. I'm not making this today. I'm going to let all this get really, really well marinated overnight. And then I'm gonna start cooking it tomorrow. But I did want to show you that. And also I'm going to be putting some um, olive oil on it. Let me just get that really quick. Okay, I'm going to get some of this unfiltered extra virgin olive oil. And I'm going to season the other side, rub this seasoning in on both sides. And then I'm going to, you know, once I massage it in, then I'm going to finish it with the oil. Then I'm going to cover it. And then we're going to proceed with the aromatics. I might add some more aromatics with the seasoning, which might just be some fresh garlic and a little bit um, of onion, maybe just fresh garlic. I'm still kind of putting it together, but this is how you make lamb shanks. I love lamb shanks. It's one of my all time favorite foods. Six garlic cloves later, I think I am adding garlic. Let's get it off. I love this, um, my garlic press. It's my right hand man. Mm. Um, I've had it for years. It's from a company It's called Pampered Chef. I don't know if they're still around, but if you can get that one somehow, some way, it's the best. So now I'm going to um, just kind of smudge it and smear it around. Then I'm gonna add the oil and then I'm going to rub the whole thing in and I'm just gonna leave it with this seasoning and the oil to rest. And then tomorrow I will adjust all the seasonings with a fresh seasoning and then we will braise. Running out of olive oil. I'm not running, I've run. Massage all oh, everything deep and lovely with your hands.
love you guys. Good night. I love you, you, and you. I added one last sprinkling of paprika. So now I'm going to cover it with some film and that's it. That's it for sure. And I only added the, the paprika on top. So I didn't do both sides. Well, I had a lovely afternoon picking up my Amish milk and meat. That was fun. It was a beautiful day. I don't get out enough. I'm like a, I like to call myself a um, urban Amish myself. Doing things at the old homestead. I'm rubbing some um, tomato paste on my lamb shanks because I'm about to roast them. They are at room temperature. They've been marinating for about, I don't know, four hours. They look delish. They look red and they look ready. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put them in an oven. I'm not gonna um, put them in a high oven. I'm going to put them at, I think, a 325 degree oven so that the tomato paste can start developing some color and they can start browning because they're gonna braise and uh, there's no need for me to start getting the meat all tight and, and letting the juice come out. So I'm putting this into a 325 degree oven, I think for at least an hour. Then I'm gonna add um, some wet aromatics which will be like onions and bell pepper and some other stuff. So I'll take you through it. We're working through this recipe together. We're together forever, ever, 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 ever. One last thing, add a tiny little bit of water. The, the lamb shank is gonna produce its own liquid and its oil, but um, it needs it needs a little buffering so that it's not just all drying, dried up. But when you pour the water in, just pour it on the side so that you don't um, interfere with the seasoning on top. Well, I put some, I took this, um, the lamb shanks out of the oven. I had them in there for about 30 minutes or something, 35 minutes. And I just got two, one large onion um, two tomatoes, fresh thyme. This frozen thing is the fresh seasoning. I have a video about how I made that under um, Auntie Fee salmon croquettes made with mackerel, but it's just basically celery, parsley, and green onion. And I also have some um, green bell pepper or capsicum and some carrots. My family just told me they don't like carrots, so I just got two and I just broke them in half. Really thin carrots, bay leaf, and fresh thyme. Fresh bay leaf and thyme. So that's all that's in here. And uh, my wine, my wine um, opener um, broke. So there was that. So I'm just gonna put a little water in here. That was two cups. I'm gonna cover all of this and I'm gonna put it back in the oven at 325 degrees. And maybe in about an hour, I will um, check the liquid and I will also turn um, the lamb shanks over. So that's where we are. And some um, Italian seasoning that I just got, which is perfect. It has like rosemary. I want this to be really flavorful. Once I get the wine, I will add the wine, even if I have to like reduce it a little and then it kind of add it at the end. But this should be fine. This needs still needs plenty of time. And now that I put the the seasoning, that dry seasoning on, I'm going to go ahead and give my lamb shanks a little turn because I don't want the dry seasoning to get weird on me.
It's a little fragrant. Okay, back in the oven she goes. I'm gonna put um put it back in the oven so this other side can brown and some of the vegetables can get a little caramelized and then I'm gonna put it um, put some foil on it. That's it for that side. It smells so fragrant in the house. Okay, the, the wind is blowing the steam up to my phone from that other direction. Okay, now it's time to just cover and cook for another, I don't know, probably four hours. Okay, so it's been about three and a half hours. I'm going to call it good for tonight. Tomorrow I'm going to boil the potatoes and I'm also going to put the eggplant in here. Then we shall have delicious lamb shank. So I just pulled it out of the oven. It was again at 325 for about four hours altogether. And tomorrow I'm probably going to do some kind of a rice or I'm not sure what I'm going to serve with it. Or maybe it'll just be good enough with the eggplant and the baby potatoes. So say good night. Good night. Good morning, good morning. It's a little past 7 a.m. And I thought I would just get um, my potatoes going and my carrots. So separately, I've got my potatoes that I already cleaned and put fresh water just to cover. And I've also have some carrots. So I'm going to boil these carrots maybe about five minutes five to eight minutes until they're just um almost pierceable i don't want them overcooked and the potatoes the same thing until they're fork tender but not too soft because i'm going to split them open and i'm going to put them in the lamb sauce so that they can absorb some of that lamb flavor so that's what my morning is looking like mine was had by all Okay, so the carrots still have a little bit of firmness, but are fork tender. I'm gonna drain the liquid off of these and then check the potatoes. I started draining my potatoes. I didn't even film. Okay, so this is what you wanna do. Just pierce it. There's just the slightest bit of resistance, which is perfect. They're not too soft, not too hard. I'm gonna take the water out of these as well they become cool enough to handle i'm going to split them in half and i'm going to put a tiny little bit of lamb juice or that lamb sauce we've been developing since yesterday just to start getting the the cooking i mean the flavor enhancing process going here um i still have the eggplant to put in and i'm gonna refresh a few of the seasonings and then I'm going to have to think about what I'm going to serve this with. Like I said, I might just do the lamb shank since I already have a starch, but I feel like I need a secondary starch. So I'll be thinking about that. So I just um, took a little bit of the skin off the eggplant. Sometimes it can um, become kind of stringy. And I just cut it, but look at how beautiful the eggplant is. It's just oxidizes so quick. I'm going to go ahead and put it into my lamb braise, my lamb shank braise. So the eggplant has gone in and all I'm doing is putting some of the tomato, you know, just all the seasoning on. I'm adding the potatoes as well and basting just means you know putting juice on it 
I'm not gonna put the carrots in yet. So I'm gonna get all these potatoes in. There's still a lot of potato. Uh, but I am gonna refresh the seasoning. Because I want this to be well seasoned. I'm also gonna add some fresh tomato. Doesn't that look delicious? Okay, the tomatoes in, and then this is the last of the seasoning, the dry Italian seasoning. I'm gonna baste that as well so that the, the seasoning has a chance to rehydrate since there's, it's a handmade mix of dehydrated herbs. And they're a little chunkier, and if they don't get rehydrated, they have the potential to kind of get tough and tough and like chewy. We just want them to melt right into the sauce. Okay, it's going back into another 300 degree oven. Maybe I'll bump it up. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll bump it up. Let's say it's at three, it's 300 right now. I'm going to bump it up to 325. One last thing, I'm adding some potato starch. You could add cornstarch or you could add flour, but I'm going to add that so that my meat juices can start thickening. I can correct it if I need more, but all these um, veg are gonna add extra liquid. And I just want the thickening process to begin. So there we are. Yum, yum. Well, that's it for the, the cooking of the lamb shanks. I'm going to just sprinkle a little bit of parsley on here and then I'll just let it sit, baste it every once in a while, and that'll be it. That will be it. it. Does look really, really appetizing. So I'll just cover it again, and like I said, I'll just let the flavors cook. I don't want my eggplant to get too soft. And I'm gonna be working on um, Martha Stewart's um, cornmeal cornmeal biscuit, cornmeal roll, cornmeal biscuit. I'll, I'll make that as a separate video just in case um, somebody wants to make those without watching the lamb. So thanks for joining me. I might insert one photo of how it looks served. So I, I only have a couple of minutes, seconds really. So what I've done was I got my um, my Martha Stewart cornmeal rolls. I put very thin slices of um, cucumber and tomato. I um, marinated the cucumbers in just a little bit of fresh lemon and I topped it with a uh, balsamic glaze. Then I got some horseradish um, aioli, I put a tiny little bit of feta, and now I got the braised lamb. I chopped it up. I decided to go ahead and serve it as a slider, and I'm going to put this meat on here, but I need two hands for that. Okay, I gotta get these onto the dinner table for my husband. He's working late these days. So he's not a huge lamb fan. Maybe these will win him over. So until next time, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.